Unfortunately for America's medical future, this kind of left-wing propaganda is fast becoming the rule rather than the exception. Top-ranked Harvard Medical School has activist courses like social change and the practice of medicine. They're teaching it to aspiring doctors how to be important advocates for social change. Well, at George Washington University School of Medicine, students take courses in how to talk race, power, and privilege in classroom and clinical set settings. I got to tell you, my doctor might need another doctor, probably a nose doctor, if I went in and just wanted him to, ah, hate it, and he started telling me about white privilege. I'm just saying, moving beyond bystanding to disrupting racism. Yes, that's what they're learning. And the ever popular Beyond the Binary, Navigating Pregnancy and Affirming Care for People with Diverse Gender Identities. There's also Confronting U.S. History, We Must End Racism to End Health Disparities. That course included a webinar session with Nicole Hannah-Jones, the creator of that complete fiction, 1619 Project. Because if all of our doctors hate America, it'll make the patients healthier, right? See how that works? At the Indiana University School of Medicine, first-year students in basic anatomy classes are taught that gender is a social construct, that sex and gender fall along a continuum rather than being a binary. And it calls a man and women gender types oversimplifications. I don't know about you, but when all these people graduate, I don't ever want them on my list of doctors to go see. Problem is, it'll be all the doctors. These are real classes. Many of them are required at leading medical schools in the United States of America. According to Do No Harm, this is an organization that was actually started to expose and combat all of this insanity. 23 of America's top 25 medical schools now have anti-racism instruction as the core part of their curriculum. By the way, the founder of Do No Harm, Dr. Stanley Goldfarb, joining me tonight, a little later on the program, mix up a drink, kick back, and enjoy. The one UCLA medical student that spoke to Fox News last month and the left-wing ideology uh, said, quote, left-wing ideology is laced through all four years of medical school. The student explained, quote, I would say there's not any room for pushback. It's more framed as if this is the reality of medicine or this is the reality of our society. And then the discussion is, what can we do about it? But it's not a discussion of whether the premise or anything other than the object is objective fact. That's great. Yeah. And the sun still goes around the earth. It does, really. UCLA medical students are asked to participate in climate activism, including going to a big oil resistance event. Pressuring state legislatures also to support a climate bill and helping researchers at UCLA study the environmental injustices of the prison industrial complex. This movement goes beyond medical schools rebooting their curriculum or even having a few activist classes. The New York University uh, State, uh, the State University of New York, upstate, the medical university in Syracuse, it's been around since 1834, you know, put out a few good doctors, but they've put together a diversity task force. It's kind of like the A-team that produced a 164-page report demanding action like this, quote, healthcare professionals must explicitly acknowledge that race and racism are the root of these health disparities. Their report also requires all students and staff to be trained in bystander intervention for bias. I don't even know what that is. But then again, I don't know how to remove a heart and put a pig's heart in it. So I, what do I know? All these new faculty members are required to sign a pledge affirming their commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yavol! Christopher Rufo reported on the oath that medical students at the University of Minnesota now must take 
It includes a pledge to, and I quote, honor all indigenous ways of healing that have been historically marginalized by Western medicine, fight white supremacy, colonialism, and gender binary. Amen, brother. Who doesn't want their doctor saying those things? Now, I wonder, does this indoctrination create a greater passion for activism or for becoming a better, more dedicated doctor that does know how to put a pig heart in me? No offense to Muslims. In 2022, or Jews, may I say, that's a double whammy. A Wake Forest medical student was about to draw blood from a patient who made an apparently mocking comment about pronouns, the pin that this female student was wearing. The medical student then retaliated by missing the patient's vein on, pur on purpose, so she had to stick the patient twice. But then it gets really good. Then the student bragged about what she had done in a tweet. After some backlash, Wake Forest eventually paid her, uh, placed her on extended leave. Science is no longer at the helm of American medical schools. It has been replaced with the DEI obsession. In 2022, president of the American Association of Medical Colleges said, and I quote, we believe this topic, diversity, equity, and inclusion, deserves just as much attention from learners and educators at every stage of their career as the latest scientific breakthroughs. Wow. I'd rather have them pay attention to the latest scientific breakthroughs that actually will mean something to me. And I don't care what color I am or the doctor is. DEI is just as important for medical doctors as following science. By the way, the organization he heads the American Association of Medical Colleges, the AAMC, in partnership with the American Medical Association. They form the accrediting body for the U.S. schools, for U.S. medical schools in the U.S. In fact, in 2022, the AAMC released its DEI competencies report, which spells out that the DEI propaganda that medical schools are expected to incorporate in their training of doctors. This unquestioning devotion to DEI ah, now governs admission standards at medical school. Now, I don't know about you. There's a couple of people. I want the one that was the brightest in their class. Uh, that would be the guy who flies the airplane. Dare I say, even the woman. <laughs> oh, that's so progressive. I want the best one flying the airplane. I want the... The person that's sticking their hands in my chest, I want them to be the smartest person in class. I don't care what color, what gender. Well, I, I don't necessarily want to wake up in the middle of the operation, which has happened to me twice, but that's a different story. Wake up and then see some guy dressed as a woman, you know, with too much rouge on. It's just, it would be disturbing. I'm just saying, unless they're the best qualified person. Now, the AAMC now discourages schools from using the MCAT admissions test as a way to select medical students. Dozens of schools have made the MCAT optional. The University of Pennsylvania, an Ivy League school, now has guaranteed admission with no MCAT required for black students who meet GPA and internship requirements. They also get a 50% discount on tuition. <laughs> That's great. Everybody wins, except the patient. The MCAT itself has been altered to try to create more equity in admissions. One quarter of the questions are now about social issues and psychology. As part of broadening the administrative process or the admission process beyond a student's aptitude for actually becoming a doctor, most med school applications now have DEI questions good old-fashioned litmus test to see if you follow the orthodoxy. You know what I mean? Hey, how much you love Hitler? <laughs> Never mind if you're a scientific genius. If you're opposed in any way, if you don't, you don't believe in 99 different genders, do you support the stance that racism is a public health crisis? Mm, not so much. No. Uh -uh. You're out. One doctor writing recently in the Wall Street Journal says, quote, 
I assume most people don't know how politicized their selection and training of their future physicians has become. Even I, as a physician, was unaware until my son went through medical school the application process. Nearly all of the schools requested multiple essays providing a detailed explanation of the applicant's dedication to DEI and participating in DEI-related activism. Some schools had F essays uh, querying the applicant's activism for or opinion of progressive border policies. Doc, you have a finger up my butt right now. That's all I want to hear from you is how soon you're going to get that finger out of my butt and that everything in there is OK. I don't want to hear your view on the border. Otherwise, you might have a shoe up your butt. Most also requested that students uh, discuss how they have been adversely affected by systemic racism. And if they haven't been affected, then they should discuss what plan they do have to fight systemic racism anyway. The worship of DEI has now even made the, the step one federal licensing exam, which is taken at the end of the year of medical school, a pass-fail exam. I don't know, uh, heart beats. Is it multiple choice? The one-step exam is usually the biggest decider in selecting applicants for residency in programs, but now numbered scores are not allowed because lower average scores are keeping minorities from getting into competitive residencies. Because you don't want the best and brightest students, you know, becoming heart surgeons, you need somebody who understands equity, that demands equity first and foremost, heart surgeons. I, I need to see your skin color palette, okay? What Pantone number is your face? Back in a minute with the causes and consequences of this insanity and has it ever happened before in history? Next.